in the first video in this playlist, I described the five axioms or postulates of quantum mechanics. When explaining the first axiom, I mentioned that a Hilbert space is a generalized vector space, and one that is equipped with something called an inner product. In this video, I will explain exactly what an inner product is. I will do this by first reviewing what the dot product is, and then showing how the inner product is a generalization of it. Before I begin, I'd like to make a quick note on terminology. In some books you read, the inner product is sometimes called the scalar product. Now these both mean exactly the same thing, and the term inner product is used much more often. But still, scalar product shows up a considerable amount, so be sure to keep that in mind. Okay, so first, let's review what the dot product is. The dot product is an operation between two vectors that produces a scalar as a result. It can be defined in two different ways, both of which are consistent with one another. One way is algebraic, and the other is geometric. The algebraic version is defined as the sum of the products of the coordinates of each vector. So in the case of familiar 3D space, this would mean that you multiply the components of each vector in the x direction, y direction, and z direction separately, and then add them all together. Okay, so that's simple enough. Now for the other definition. The geometric definition is equivalent, but it does come with two distinct advantages. Namely, that it allows for a natural way to define a notion of angles between two vectors, and that it provides a natural definition for the notion of the length of a vector. Okay, so what is this definition? In order to take the dot product between u and v, first, bring them together so that the origin of each vector is the same. Then, project u onto v. You will get a new vector. Let's call it u prime. Multiplying the length of this projection with the length of v gives you the dot product u dot v. And if you use the definition of cosine, you can also rewrite the length of u prime in terms of the length of u, which results in u dot v also equaling the length of u times the length of v times cosine theta, where theta is the angle between u and v. So the relation between the dot product and this angle allows for a clear definition of what the angle between two vectors is in 3D space. Also, if you consider the dot product of a vector with itself, so the angle will now be zero, then u dot u equals the length of u squared. And so the length of u can then be defined as the square root of the dot product. So this means that simply by having the definition of the dot product first, one could use this to define the angle between two vectors and also define the length of a vector. This may seem like a pedantic and pointless exercise when considering 3D space. However, it becomes absolutely necessary when considering the Hilbert space that quantum mechanics operates in. Recall that the vectors in quantum mechanics are not vectors living in 3D space. Rather, they are abstract vectors living in a Hilbert space. So we cannot just use the dot product. However, it would still be very useful if we could generalize both the notions of angles between vectors as well as the lengths of vectors. And this is just what the inner product or scalar product is used for. By generalizing the dot product from 3D space to any abstract vector space, the inner product allows for natural generalizations of angles and lengths in any vector space that has an inner product on it. The technical lingo is that a vector space is a specific mathematical structure that obeys certain axioms. And if you define an inner product on it, then you equip the vector space with an inner product. This turns the vector space into an inner product space. So in the context of quantum mechanics, we have vectors that are called kets living in this larger abstract Hilbert space. But remember, kets are just the name physicists give to these vectors. They are actually functions. And I think it would be helpful for the remainder of this video to remove the ket notation and just focus on the fact that these vectors are functions. Now let's pick any two functions that live in this Hilbert space. We'll call them psi and phi. The inner product is then a map that takes these two functions and associates them to a scalar in the field that underlies the Hilbert space. In almost every circumstance in quantum mechanics, the underlying field will be complex. So the scalar that the inner product maps to will be a complex number. 
and there are four rules that this map must satisfy for all the vectors in the Hilbert space, as well as all the scalars in the complex number field. First, if you take the inner product of two vectors, where the vector in the second slot is multiplied by a scalar alpha, you can pull the scalar out and it will be equivalent to multiplying the scalar alpha by the inner product of the two vectors. Next, the second slot must be linear. So if you have the sum of two vectors, psi plus gamma in the second slot, then you can split this apart and instead take the inner product between phi and psi and then add the inner product of phi and gamma. This is actually the physicist's way of defining inner products. In most math books you read, you will see that both of these rules are defined in the first slot rather than the second. Now they end up both working the same way and each has their own advantages in terms of convenience of notation, but for this series of videos, we will stick with this notation that is conventional in quantum mechanics. Okay, so the next rule that the inner product must satisfy is that if you swap the vector in the first slot with the vector in the second slot, the resulting inner product is not equal, but rather they are the complex conjugates of each other. This is sometimes called complex conjugate symmetry. And finally, the last rule is that the inner product of a vector with itself is always greater than zero if the vector itself is not the zero vector. And this is equal to zero if and only if you take the inner product of the zero vector with itself. Okay, so there's the definition of an inner product in the context of quantum mechanics. Remember though, that one of our goals with the definition was to be able to use it to generalize the notions of angles and lengths. And we can do that as follows. In the abstract case, we won't necessarily have a notion of what any arbitrary angle is between vectors, but we do have a way of saying whether two vectors are perpendicular or orthogonal to each other. And that is if their inner product is zero. We can also generalize the notion of length by defining something called the norm of a vector. This is defined as the square root of the inner product of a vector with itself. So the norm of any vector is just the generalized concept of the length of a vector. So that's it for this video. Stay tuned for the next video in this playlist where I will explain what Dirac's Brockett notation is, along with the mathematical reason of why it actually works.